Ready to rock and roll? I, I've been a good boy this one. Yeah. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, Rick Warner has just been quoted as saying he's been a good boy, so all you folks back at home. <laughs> hey, we got Ken Smyers, Eric Trump was here again. We ran to our old friend, Rick Warner, a.k.a. the Innovator. Hey. hey, Rick, buddy, man, good to see you. Hey, guys, good to see you as well. How you been, man? Very good. Thank yeah, you. we're going to rock and roll, man. We understand you've just been uh, out and about, you know, solving world problems like you know coming up with the algorithm for the the driving car self-driving car and robots and stuff like that so uh i wish that was me i'd be a little richer uh you know the uh, uh the, the david pogue was was great this morning you know all the all the innovative tech and stuff so yeah we've been real busy uh um uh, finished up a nice uh project at the pentagon uh, we're getting into the next phase of that and uh, a lot of data centers coming up and uh, you know, a lot of clients uh, looking to take their, um, I guess, their facilities to the to the next level operationally. So it's it's a good time to be in this business. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, for our viewers out there, you might remember Rick is we call him the innovator because he's always doing innovative stuff. What what's some of the technologies that impressed you at the show so far? Um, it's it's a lot of the um, uh, I guess from my perspective I went to the developers track the first day uh, it's nice to see Tritium uh, pivoting to uh, open uh, basically open community development environments with the uh, IntelliJ and the Gradle uh, those type of things so those those are you know common tools uh, used for like uh, mobile and Android programming so I, I think it's going to really open up uh, the the Niagara framework to a whole other group of, of um, I guess industries or people, developers. So it, yeah, you know, we're going to see a, some exciting stuff here in the next few years. Well, I know uh, you're very busy at OME, but I know you're also active in about uh, four or five other uh, as a consultant or a part of an advisory committee. What's your next uh, move? I, I hear you go out to Ibicon Realcom. Yeah, I'm uh, going to head out there uh, a little bit. Um, uh, I think my time is going to be limited out there, but we're doing. Uh, I'm going to support the uh, integrators uh, boot camp the first day. We're doing a, a session out there on an industrial, um, uh, you know, IoT, or whatever they're calling it this week. But, um, uh, so that should be pretty good. It's that the impact that, that uh, some of those uh, appliances and better controllers are going to have on our industry. Well, do you think it's going to, uh, I'm still concerned why we have the technology, it's here. What, what are some of the headwinds or some of the reasons why people are slow to adopt what would really benefit them and benefit the world we live in? What, what are the headwinds? Uh, what are still some of the reasons why large organizations that can make a major difference by adopting technologies that you provide, what, what's, what's causing them to delay? Well, you know, it's a number of reasons. I, I think, um, you, you know, the, the um, you know, a lot of them see it as change for change's sake or they're not really seeing the, you know, the benefit. I've, I mean, I've even went away a little bit from having the return on investment conversation because even that's just a little bit, um, I think it's a little bit too, too uh, maybe aggressive of a concept. It, right now it's just, um, if you can show the client how um, the technology can improve, you know, improve their efficiencies, improve their effectiveness, and can give them you know, benefits, um, you know, everybody's looking for that 18-month payback, and what I'm starting to tell the clients now is, is really, if you're really committed to improving the the, the facility um, and and the operations and uh, occupant, um, um, I guess experience, if you will, is you, you got to it's a two it's a two to three year process. That's so amazing because I just I had just uh, overheard the three thirty three hundred concept, and I, oh, okay. I didn't understand that as well as I do now. That it cost you three dollars per square foot. Mm -hmm. uh, to lease a place, it cost you thirty. I'm sorry, three dollars for the energy and your utility. So that's right. your possible that's, savings. Yeah, two, thirty dollars yeah. for the, the leasing, but it's three hundred dollars for the occupants, for the people in there. If you make them more productive, that's where you can really squeeze the sponge. And these people that it should invest in our technology could really get a gain or return on their investment is through better productivity and happier employees. Yeah, it, it's uh, the you know one of the concepts I keep hearing is is the uh, facilities or the building or you know it, it, the technology needs to allow the building to adapt to the occupant, and um, you know I don't I, I don't claim to really understand that concept. I, I just I was re recently at the Microsoft campus. They have like a building 83 out there. That's probably the closest thing I've seen to you know a building sort of adapting to the to, to the client. So. Um, uh, that you know, a lot of the 
Um, I think in recent years, a lot of everybody's fo focus has been on, you know, energy, energy, energy. And so now as the, you know, the energy costs seem to have stabilized a little bit, now it's, you know, they're, they're realizing that, oh, well, it's taking me X amount of people per square foot to operate this, this facility. You know, is there ways to make that easier? Is, it, is there way, easier ways for occupants of a facility to, um, you know, let the um, managers of the building, you know, know ways to improve, you know, their, their, you know, it's not so much a complaint system, it's uh, like in my facility, or where our office building is, the, you know, one of the units was surging. I mean, it, so it was just, you know, it was like calling them up and having the conversation with them of, you know, hey, here's what I think is going on. So um, if there was, if there's a way that the technology, um, you know, that, that the um, occupant of the building can kind of interface with it and, and let them know immediately. Um, yeah, so now it's, the process is, is okay, you got to call someone up, you wait, they fill out a work ticket, the service guy comes out. So, um, you know, that's extremely, you know, inefficient process. So I think if you could approve that a little bit, I think, um, you know, I, th I think that would be a, a big benefit. Get into that 300 you're talking about. Awesome. Awesome. We're talking with Rick Warner, a.k.a. the innovator, a Control Trends community favorite. Hey, Rick, uh, how do people get a hold of you? What's the website? Uh, the website is uh, o OME Facility Solutions or OM Engineering, uh, either one. And, uh, you know, also you can reach out, you know, just uh, direct, you know, sales at OM Engineering. I'd be more than happy to, you know, talk with folks. I actually got a call from uh, a gentleman out in Montana that, that, had, that had seen some, some videos and was asking me some questions. So it's cool. You guys are, are, are reaching out. Good. Well, we appreciate it, buddy. Yeah. We appreciate you. Just say it with me. Thank you. Rick Warner, the... Innovator. <laughs> Can you do a pose for Thank us? You. There you go. There you go. All right, buddy. <laughs>